Well, again, welcome everybody. A big thank you to Muslim Space and Austin Yoga Tree for um, making this happen throughout Ramadan and bringing us all together to support each other through this time. So my name is Joanne. We'll have one more class um, in this series and just I use this opportunity to, like I said before, recharge our batteries and fill up our cups moving forward. So for tonight's practice, I'd like you to grab a pillow of any kind. You can grab a pillow off the bed, a pillow off the sofa. It might be handy for you to have a bath towel. So I just have a um, regular sized bath towel here, but when we take it and we fold it up a couple times, it can work as a small cushion to support the back of our head as needed. Any other type of cushions you might have around the house and a throw blanket. And the blanket also once folded up can work as a nice prop here to support our back and our body. And then one additional element this evening is I'd like us to have some type of book and a bigger size book or an item that's maybe slightly heavy and flat that we can place on our belly. We'll start this evening's class in a reclined position laying down on our back. We have done this before, but abdominal breathing is a really nice way to go um, into our practice and connect with this breath and kind of wake up this area of our body. So utilizing this bigger, heavier book um, can be a nice tool. When we do come down onto our back, you are welcome to lie flat to the floor here. If you wanna help the low back release a little bit more, take that pillow, place it to the front of the mat, and we will support the backs of our knees over the pillow. And like I said, if you need a little extra cushion for the back of the head, you can take that folded towel and place it to the top of your mat where we'll relax our head. I would like to, let's see. So once we work our way down onto our back here, take a moment to loosen things up. If we need to readjust our clothing, our surroundings, go ahead and do so. You can bend up your knees here for a moment, lengthen out that low back, and actually keeping the knees bent with a little support of that pillow behind the knee creases can feel quite nice for some of us. But like I said, you can also just stretch out the legs here Maybe let the feet be wider than the hips and let the feet fall open. Adjust the shoulder blades. Find the back center of the skull. Taking a heavier prop tonight, if you have it, and placing it on that low belly. And we'll just let it rest there for a moment. Allow the arm bones to roll open away from the body, palms up, and allow the fingertips to curl up naturally. Making any other adjustments here in the beginning. And once we feel like we're in a comfortable place, we'll close the eyes. Turn our attention inward. And press that pause button from our day. Feel the body relax towards the ground. Relax all the muscles of the body, especially all those little muscles around our face. Soften around the eyes, unfurl the brow. If you tend to hold some tension around the jaw, move the cheeks with air, wiggle out the mouth. And again, feeling a quality of heaviness come over the body as we surrender our body towards the earth. We'll start by mentally scanning our body this evening. 
starting from the top of the head and working all the way down to fingertips and toes. As we're scanning our body, we are continuing to let go of any unnecessary tension or tightness we might find. We might come across some areas of our body this evening that we're healing and taking care of, or that need a little extra TLC. So as we find those areas, let's pause on those areas, sending a healing breath into them and allowing them to relax, remembering that we each have permission to modify and adjust our practice accordingly. And now let's spread this awareness to the rhythm of the breath. And we'll begin by simply observing and watching the body breathe. Watching the body inhale as we breathe in some fresh air and energy this evening. And observing and watching the body exhale as we let go of stale old air and energy. Ideally, we are breathing in and out through the nose as smoothly and evenly as possible. On those inhales, we might notice that the body naturally expands. So we'll feel this expansion around the chest, the rib cage, even around the belly. And on our exhales, we'll notice the body naturally contracts. Chest softens and the belly drops a little bit further down into the body. So we're gonna move into our yogi breathing, diaphragmic pranayama this evening. So this is a really nice way to deepen our breath. Belly breathing has a very calming effect on our nervous system. And so we'll concentrate just a little bit more on the abdominal region now. When we get to our next inhale, breathing in through the nose, relax the belly completely and we'll purposely try to lift our prop up a little higher. Then when we get to our exhale, we'll let the belly drop back down into the body. We may even add a gentle contraction of the abdominal muscles, pulling the navel towards the spine, and we will lower our prop as much as we can. The inhale relaxes the belly. It expands like a balloon. We lift our prop upwards towards the ceiling. And on the exhale, belly drops back down into the body. Gentle contraction of those abdominal muscles, navel to spine, trying to lower that prop down as much as we can. Continue at a comfortable rhythm and pace for your body and breath. When we inhale, relax the belly, it expands and we lift up our prop. That actually creates space for the diaphragm to drop down into the body, pulling that breath deep into the lungs. And on our exhale, when we contract the abdominal muscles and we lower the prop, that helps to push our diaphragm up into the body, which helps push that stale old air out of the body. The other thing we'd like to try to do this evening is add Samavritti Pranayama, which means equal or even breathing. So trying to match our exhale to our inhale. And we do this when we get to our next inhale by simply mentally counting the number that we're filling ourselves up and expanding, whatever number that is. So that when we get to the exhale, we try to breathe that same number back out. For example, if we're inhaling, expanding the belly to a count of one, two, three, 
When we get to the exhale and we contract and lower our prop, we would exhale for one, two, three. Keeping the mind very focused on that breath. We'll try to take just a few more rounds. So we'll all cycle through one more round of breath this evening. This round of breathing, let go of counting the breath, but simply try to take your biggest breath of your day. So on that next inhalation, we're going to breathe in as much as we possibly can. We can start with that belly, let it expand, lift the prop up. Continue to breathe into the body, into the rib cage, the torso and the chest, the chest may rise all the way up to the brim on the throat. And once we are completely full of breath, gently and slowly start the exhale, taking our time to empty every last drop. So allow the chest to soften, the prop will drop back down, gentle contraction of abdominal muscles, and empty, empty, empty. At the very bottom of that exhale, we will let go of trying to follow and control the breath for a moment. So the breath will wander away wherever it wants to go. Carefully reach up for our prop we placed on the belly and just set it off to the side out of the way. And then let's start to wake the body back up. So feeling the body relaxed on the floor, let's start with the toes, give them a little wiggle. Wake up the fingertips. A rock of the head side to side just to help release the muscles around the neck and shoulders. And then step those feet in. If we have a prop down there, when you step the feet in, you can use your feet to push it out of the way, or you can reach down with one hand and push it out of the way. Once we walk our feet in, draw that belly in to hug our knees in. We'll gently do a little rock here side to side across our low back. And just by pulling these knees in towards the body does help stretch out the muscles of the back. And it puts a little bit of compression on that belly again. So we're gonna start with some flowy movements here in a supine position to just loosen up the body and warm the body for our practice. So we'll bring the feet back down to the ground. This time, try to keep the insides of the legs and feet touching and slide the legs all the way up down the middle of the mat. Bring the arms down beside the body, palms down, draw the shoulder blades down. This pose is called water pump pose. We'll coordinate our movements with the breath. Inhale through the nose, reach those arms up to the ceiling and then stretch them all the way overhead, giving the shoulders a nice stretch. Simultaneously flex those feet. So pull your toes in towards your shin bones. Exhale out through the nose, point your toes forward to the front of the mat, float the arms up and all the way back down beside the body, palms down. That's the movement with the breath. Inhale, arms float up all the way overhead that might touch the ground overhead. Flex the feet, toes to shin bone. Exhale, point the toes forward, arms float up and back down beside the body. Continue here, inhaling into a long stretch for the body. Now in this next exhale, we wanna incorporate a little bit more of that abdominal work. Point the toes, float the arms down. This time, draw the belly in a little bit more and gently float the head up and look to the toes. So this will add a very gentle abdominal contraction and a stretch for the root of the neck. 
And then inhale, we lower the head down, we reach the arms overhead and we flex those feet. Let's just do one more here. Exhale, water pump pose. If we're floating that head up, draw the belly in and then inhale, reach overhead. Now we're gonna go into flowing Pavana Muktasana or wind relieving pose. This is gonna use a little bit more strength of the abdominals and also warm the hips. Exhale, continue this movement with the arms. So we pump them down, the head can lift. But this time using your core, pull your right knee up towards the body. So we're compressing the right hand side. And then on the inhale, re-extend the leg in the arms overhead. Exhale, using the core, head and arms continue to press back down towards the ground, head lifts, left knee pulls up. Inhale, stretch it out. So we're moving side to side. We'll do one more on each side. Exhale, pump the arms down, head can lift, right knee pulls in as if you're trying to draw your nose to your knee. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, left side. So we're working ascending to descending colon. Inhale, reach overhead. Exhale, float both arms down beside the body. Again, slide the shoulder blades down. Step those feet back in towards the body. Now we're trying to align the heels with our sit bones. There's a few inches between the feet and the knees. We want our knees to stay in line with the toes. We're moving right into flowing bridge pose. This is going to stretch now those abdominal muscles and strengthen the backside. So we want to tighten up the glutes and the hamstrings. On the inhale, we squeeze the muscles of the back to lift our hips up towards the ceiling. It might just be an inch or so. And then exhale, we lower the hips back down. Now try to keep your knees pointing straight forward to the toes or in line with the toes. Inhaling, strengthen the back to lift up, stretching the front. Exhale to lower. The other thing that has happening, we're moving into a gentle inversion, especially as that belly lifts up and the heart rises slightly higher than the head. And we wanna make sure that the weight is moving into the meaty part of our shoulders and not into the neck. So our neck should stay on its national, natural curve off of the floor. Inhaling to lift, stretching out the front of the body. Exhaling to lower. Now we can add the arms one more time and this will be a nice massage for the upper back muscles if it feels okay for the shoulders. So that next inhale, the hips lift up. One more time, stretch your arms up to the ceiling all the way overhead. And on the exhale, when we lower down, the arms float up and back down beside the body. Flowing bridge pose. Let's take one more this evening, follow that breath. We'll meet on the exhale the next time the hips and the arms come back down to the ground. Pause here. We can rock the knees gently side to side for a moment. And then one more time, let's pull those knees in towards the body. This time, bring the hands behind the thighs and let's extend our legs straight up towards the ceiling, point and flexing the feet, giving ourselves another inversion. So this is a nice way to undo the effects of gravity on the lower half of our body throughout our day, taking pressure off those joints through the knees, to the ankles and feet. This pose is beneficial for our circulation. Use the help of the hands here. We can rub our hands up and down the backs of those hamstrings, creating a little bit of warmth back there. And then let's bend those knees, draw the knees into the body. We'll bring one arm right beside the head. We'll roll all the way onto that side in our fetal position, resting the head on that arm. Take the top hand and let it fall to the ground in front of the heart. And we wanna pause here just for a moment because we have been on our backs for a little bit. And then turn the heart towards the ground. 
Extending and stretching that top leg out can help the body come up. And then we'll use our hands to bring our body up. So we're gonna move into a seated position tonight. I would highly recommend having some type of um, cushion to sit up on for our sit bones. If you have a pillow off of the bed, that's okay, but it tends to be soft and we can sink into one hip or the other. So actually taking our throw blanket and folding it up a few times in half might be a little bit better for our practice tonight. And that will form a firmer cushion. So once we're in position, we wanna find those sit bones and sit up nice and tall as we can. We're going to come into Baddha Konasana right away. So this is seated bound angle position. So we'll actually try to bring the soles of the feet towards one another. If we are propped up and our knees need a little bit more cushion, again, blankets and pillows can slide under. Ideally, they're equal in height to give those knees a little bit more support. So this will be a bigger stretch here around the hips, the inner thighs. What's important is that we'll wanna to try to keep our spine as tall as possible. That's why that lift under the sit bones will help loosen up the waistband so that our belly has some freedom to move. So we're on our sit bones, lengthening up through the crown of the head, drawing the hands towards our feet or our ankles. And we're just gonna sit here for a moment. Lift up through the chest and the heart, let the shoulders fall away from the ears. So gravity is also working in here to stretch out around those hips and thighs. If you're able to let the knees float, and some of you they might come easily towards the ground and have more flexibility in that area of the body than some of us. So another option here is to add a hinge movement and the hips, and this will intensify the stretch here for the body. If you'd like to approach that, we bring our fingertips forward. It's important to remember that we're not rounding or slouching the back. We're trying to keep some extension through our spine here. But as we walk the fingertips forward, we'll feel that drawing in of the thigh bones into the hip sockets and lead with the heart. And again, some of you are gonna have more space to move into. You may continue to walk your fingertips out in front of the body and bow the body towards the ground. If you get to that point, slide an additional prop out in front of you to maybe rest the forehead on. This is about as far as I'll go this evening. I'm getting a deep stretch through those hip creases. I'm protecting my low back by gently drawing in through my abdominal muscles. And I'm just releasing the thigh bones towards the ground. Let's all take one more breath here, in and out through the nose. And then the next inhale, we will walk ourselves back into an upright position for our spine. So take your time to walk your hands back towards the feet and sit up nice and tall. Take those hands to the outsides of the knees. Let's step our feet wider than our hips. Knees are still bent. Hands come outside of the hips. You can take some weight into the hands and just gently rock your knees side to side to loosen up that area of the hips. So the next posture we'll move into is Janu Shashasana, head to knee pose. So different um, benefits of this posture, one is to continue with the hip opening on one side and hamstring back of leg stretching on the other side. This is also gonna do some abdominal compression right to left to help with our digestive system again. So we'll start by extending both legs forward in Dandasan. Keep a slight bend in the knees, especially if your sit bones are elevated. We wanna be mindful of not collapsing the knees all the way towards the ground. We'll start with the right side. We'll step our right foot in towards the sit bone and then allow that right knee to fall open. Bringing the sole of the right foot towards the inner thigh you may be able to draw that left heel closer towards the pelvic floor. If the right knee needs some support, go ahead and place a cushion underneath the knee. We're still facing forward. We're squaring our hips and shoulders towards our extended leg. 
On the inhale, float the fingertips to either side of that left leg, actively flex the left foot, toes to shin bones, and sit up nice and tall. On the exhale, again, the movement is a hinge at the hips. We're not rounding or collapsing the body down. Instead, we're trying to walk our fingertips forward and lead with the heart. Bringing that drishti or that focal point to that left big toe. So again, some of us might have a little bit more space to move into. If you're able to continue to walk fingertips forward, gently flare the elbows out so we keep our chest and heart open. You might eventually bring your gazing drishti point to that left knee. And if your belly is close to your thighs and your head is close to your knee, at that point, you may gently round the upper back, dropping the forehead towards the knee. If you're like me, I have a lot of tightness in this area of my body. I'm still receiving a really nice big stretch up the back of that leg. And I'm getting a little bit of abdominal compression here in my lower right belly, or left belly, I should say. Let's all find one more cycle of breath in our pose. Same thing on the inhale. We'll walk our fingertips back towards us. We'll lift up to the crown of the head and we'll come into an upright seated position. Now stay here. We're going to move into one more pose. Marichyasana C on this side. It's a seated twist pose. So twists are really beneficial, again, for the digestive system and to help release tension down the muscles of the back. So we will float the right knee back up and step the right foot in front of the sit bone. Take the hands to that shin bone and we'll use this as a little bit of leverage to sit up a little taller. Our left leg should still be very active. Take the right fingertips and float them slightly off to the side behind the body. So I'm elevated, so I'm using my fingertips. If you're up a little bit higher, you may need to add additional props underneath that hand. Try to avoid leaning back into that hand and putting your weight into it. We'll take the left arm, wrap it around that shin bone. Inhale, sit up tall. On the exhale, we're gonna to continue to twist to our right. So I am hugging that knee towards the body. I'm getting this compression now on the right hand side of the belly, keeping those shoulders and chin parallel to the floor. I'm gonna follow my breath. So on the inhale, I'm gonna sit a little taller. On the exhale, I'm gonna continue this twist, rotating up the axis of the spine through the mid back, the shoulders, even the neck. The gaze can try to peek behind the body, opening those eyes nice and wide. Don't forget about the front leg and the front foot that acts as our anchor. Let's take another deep breath in. On our next exhale, we'll unwind out of the twist, the head, the shoulders, and the body until we're facing straight back forward. Once we're back forward, slide the right foot forward. We should end up back in Dandasan or staff pose, propped up on our sit bones. The hands can come beside the hips to help lengthen the spine and a little micro bend in those knees, especially if we're propped up. And we'll do that on the other side. So we'll step the left foot in towards us, Janus or Shasan first. We'll allow that left knee to fall open, drawing the sole of the foot towards the inner thigh or heel closer towards the pelvic floor. Offer that knee additional support as needed. Now flex the right foot actively, toes towards the shin bone. Frame that right leg with the fingertips, sit up tall through the crown of the head. Inhale, breathing. On the exhale, trying to hinge at the hips. Continue to draw that low belly in. Our breath will be our guide. So if the breath, especially the exhale, allows us to move a little deeper physically into the pose, go ahead and do so. Eventually the drishti to the big toe. 
When you get to the point, if belly's on the thighs and you're folded more in half, you may bring your drishti to that kneecap. And those of you in a deeper forward fold, head is close to the knee, feel free to do a slight rounding in the upper back to drop that forehead to the knee. Continue to let the chest and heart be open. One more breath here. The next inhale, take your time, walk the fingertips back towards the body, sit up nice and tall through the crown of the head. We'll go right into our seated twist. So help that left knee up, plant that left foot right in front of the sit bone. Taking the hands to that shin bone, sit up nice and tall keeping our right leg nice and active. The left fingertips will move around to the side slightly behind the body. Remember that we're not leaning into that hand. If anything, push off those fingertips to sit up a little taller. Right arm hugs around that shin bone, breathe it in. On the exhale, we can gently draw that knee in towards the body and start our rotation to the left. So if we'll feel this compression now along that left abdominal wall. Keep the spine long, shoulders and chin parallel to the floor. And with every breath, we might continue a little bit deeper of a twist. Following those exhales into a deeper twist, we'll continue to rotate through the upper back, the neck, even open those eyes nice and wide and peek as far as we can behind the body. Don't forget the right leg is an anchor and we want to keep that right foot actively flexing. And then one more big breath in through the nose. On the exhale, we'll unwind the body, the head, the shoulders, the front body to face straight back forward. Once we're facing back forward, slide that left foot forward back into Dandasana or staff pose. Try to even out the feet. Use your hands to support behind the hips and you can straighten one leg at a time, slight bend in the opposite knee, point and flex the feet a couple times. And then we're gonna make a big transition here and flip the body around to tabletop. However, you can get there with your body, walking the feet around, shifting the weight around and then Clearing space as needed on our mat. So in our tabletop position, we're stacking our joints and turning our body into somewhat of a tabletop. So spread the fingers wide, hands underneath the shoulders, and the hands are nice and broad here. Arms are the front legs of our table. Stack those knees underneath the hips, a little bit of space between the knees and the feet thigh bones or the back legs of the table. Draw that belly in just enough to support the back so we're not sinking or sagging and the head is floating in line with the spine. We'll come back to the rhythm of our breath to help loosen up around the hips and our spine for some cat cows. On the inhale, relax the belly. Stretch the spine long up to the crown of the head as we try to gaze forward. On the exhale, draw the belly in, scooping the tailbone under and rounding our back up to the ceiling. Draw the chin towards the chest and take your drishti to the belly button. Inhale, sway that low back, lengthen up the spine through each vertebra all the way to the crown of the head. And then exhale, draw the belly in, push into the ground to stretch out the back, rounding it up to the ceiling. So we'll each follow our breath and rolling that breath like a wave up and down the spine. Start to feel a little bit more freedom around the hips into some of those pelvic tilts into the low back, the back of the heart around the shoulder blades.
And then let's come back to a neutral position. Tuck the toes under, walking those hands about one hand's distance forward, so our arms at more at an angle. We're going to try to lift our bodies up into downward facing dog this evening. Remember, if you come up into this inversion and it doesn't feel good for our body, you can come right back down to your tabletop or even a child's pose. I'll show us that in a moment. But for downward facing dog, we still press into the hands. I'm going to pull that low belly in. And as I press into the earth, I'm going to lift my knees and the hips up towards the ceiling and then shift that weight back and down the legs. So I'm in an upside down V position. You might need to step your feet a little closer in or wiggle them a little further out. It's totally okay if the heels aren't touching the ground here. Bend the knees more deeply if we need to help release our back a little bit more. Now it does take some upper body strengthening here, but we still want to shift that body weight towards the back and down the leg so that the hands aren't taking all the weight. Draw the belly in, draw the belly towards the thighs. And try to float the head between those upper arm bones. So this is a nice way to stretch out the whole back of the body. And let's take our dog for a walk this evening by bending one knee and pressing the opposite heel towards the ground. And this is going to be a bigger stretch for the back of that leg. And then you can switch so you're pedaling the feet from side to side, sinking one heel down, bending the opposite knee. So as you're stretching out the backs of the legs, getting some blood flow towards the head, in the hands, really try to press through the mount of the index finger and thumbs to distribute that weight out of the wrists. And in those upper arm bones, try to roll them away from the ears so that neck is long and loose. And we're just gonna be here for another breath or two tonight. So for our last breath, just sink the heels towards the ground. Draw the belly towards the thighs, press the thighs towards the back of the mat and find some stillness in the pose. On the next inhale, we are going to shift our weight forward, bringing our shoulders over our wrists. We'll probably need to slide our feet back a little bit into a plank position. We're not gonna hang out here very long. We'll drop right down to our knees into a kneeling plank position. And then on the exhale, we're gonna come all the way onto our bellies tonight. So bend the elbows back into the body, lower the body all the way down to the ground. Once we're on our belly, stack the hands to the front of the mat, one hand on top of the other, flaring the elbows out. You may either drop your forehead straight down to the hands or turn the head to one side, resting one ear on top of the hands. Now relax the feet. So flatten out the tops of the feet, let your heels flop open, give your hips a little wiggle side to side and relax the whole back of the body. We are adding some gentle back bending in this evening's class. This will stretch the abdominal muscles when we lift up and lengthen. It's really important to have some gentle back bending every day in our lives to counter all the flexion and rounding we do in our spine. But to begin, we're just relaxing here on the belly. From here, slide the hands underneath the shoulders Draw those elbows in towards the rib cage and extend your chin forward on the mat. Now we're going to energize through our feet and our legs. So actively press the tops of the feet into the ground. You'll want to keep your feet slightly wider than the hips if you do have any low back conditions you're taking care of. Or slide the insides of the feet and legs to touch. And then on the inhale, squeeze the upper back and mid back muscles. We're lifting up into Bhujangasana or Cobra Pose. So this actually strengthens the back. Moving right into Sphinx Pose, slide your elbows forward underneath the shoulders. So at this point, we're gonna start resting into our arm bones. We want our elbows to be directly underneath our shoulders and knifing the pinky edge of our hands into the ground. The palms are facing each other. You should be able to take the webbing of your thumb and index finger and if you turn your hands in, grab a hold of the inner creases at the elbows. 
Now the back side of the body can relax again because we're not going to use it. So relax the glutes, the heels can flop open, no big deal. And the upper half of the body, I want us to press our forearms down into the ground and pull the crown of the head forward and then upward. So we should feel a stretch now through the abdominal wall up the chest. And then pressing those forearms into the ground, try to lift the crown of the head upwards so that we can gaze straight forward. This is Sphinx pose. This is a little much for our back. At any time, flare your elbows out, turn the head and just relax on the belly. But Cobra and Sphinx pose should be a part of our everyday practice. From here, we'll do a little release for our neck and shoulders tonight. Inhale through the nose. On the exhale, simply look over your right shoulder. You can open the eyes wide, use your peripheral vision and see how far you can see. Maybe you see a heel or a foot back there. Inhale the head back to center. Exhale, look over the left shoulder. See how far you can see. Inhale back to center. We'll do that one more time to each side. Exhaling, look over the right shoulder, gentle release for the neck. Inhale back to center. Exhale, look over the left shoulder. Inhale back to center. Exhale, flare those elbows out, stack the hands. Now turn the head the opposite direction. So if your head was turned to one side, Go ahead and turn it to the other or forehead straight down. Relax the muscles of the back. Just take a nice deep breath in and out through the nose. And then chin forward, hands underneath the shoulders. Squeeze the elbows and snug to the body. Tuck the toes under, tuck the tailbone under. So we do have to get ourselves back up off the ground. This is also an important practice to have. Draw into those lower bellies, press into the floor and ease your way back up. You might come to somewhat of a kneeling plank position. We're gonna bring our knees right back underneath our hips so that we're back to tabletop and take a couple rounds of our cat cow to stretch out the back from our back bending. Remember the inhale is a gentle back bend. And an exhale rounds the back up to the ceiling. And then we're gonna give our low back an even bigger stretch in our first child's pose, bringing the toes to touch. Let's open those knees wider than our hips, drawing those sit bones down to the heels, extending the fingertips forward, melting the belly, the heart, and the head to the ground. For those of us that are unable to sit back on the heels, you have a pillow nearby, slide that pillow or blanket behind the thighs to support the hips. And if the head doesn't easily touch the ground, stack your fists, resting your forehead onto your hands instead. Here, we'll just take a couple more breaths, stretching out the low back, letting the head ground towards the earth. The next inhale, float the head up, use the help of your hands to lift the body up. If it's available, walk your hands back towards the body, sitting up, so sitting back on the heels. I have a pillow underneath me today. You'll shift your knees over to one side and your hips over to the other, just as a transition to bring our feet back out in front of us. So we're keeping it grounded this evening. We're staying connected to the ground tonight. And we're actually gonna bring it back down to the ground. So we'll do a few more positions on our back to work that area around our belly, and then end up in our final relaxation. So I'm gonna scooch so that we're back towards the middle of our mat. One of the safest ways to come down is to lean off to one side and use those hands to walk us all the way back down to the ground. 
At this point, we'll roll onto our back, loosen the clothing, adjust the clothing so that we're nice and flat, no kinks or creases that we're resting on here. Draw the belly in, hug the knees in, rock out the back. So we did a flowing Pavana Muktasana earlier, wind relieving pose. Now we're gonna do um, more of a hold, so a little deeper version of that posture. Take the hands onto the right shin bone, drop the left foot to the ground, and then slide that left foot straight forward. The left leg can be slightly active to help anchor it, but you can also let it relax as long as your low back is able to stay grounded. So with this wind relieving pose, we're gonna to try to use a deep belly breath here again to massage that area of the body. On the inhale, try to inflate the abdomen. And on the exhale, using the strength of the hands, we're gonna draw the right knee towards our right armpit. So we're not pulling it directly into the chest. It's not falling open outside of the shoulder. We're just allowing it to move maybe about an inch to the side of the rib cage but we should feel a push on the belly. Elbows are in, shoulders are down. On the inhale, back off a little bit. Inflate the abdomen. Exhale, draw knee to armpit. Just one more round. Next inhale, release the grip, drop the foot to the floor, slide it all the way out. Reach the arms overhead so that blood rushes all the way back out to fingertips and toes. It'll also stretch and open the belly and the hip flexors. Exhale, arms down, walk the feet in. Draw the belly in to hug the knees in. Hands come onto the left shin bone, drop the right foot back down to the floor. Slide the right foot forward. You can keep some energy to that leg if that helps keep your low back grounded or simply relax the right leg. Our concentration is gonna be the strength in our hands. Take a breath in through the nose, try to expand the abdomen. Exhale, drawing left knee towards the left armpit, compressing that left abdominal wall. You may also feel a little Pinching or compression in the front of the left hip, and that's normal. Inhale, back off, inflate the belly. Exhale, pull. Elbows in, shoulders down, faces relaxed. One more round. Next inhale, release the grip, drop the left foot down, slide it all the way out, arms overhead, stretch it out. Exhale, arms down, walk both feet in. Draw the belly in to hug the knees in. Spinal twist, so another twist. Keeping the knees together and the feet parallel, reach the arms out from the shoulders. On the exhale, let's lower our knees off to the right-hand side. If that bottom thigh doesn't easily touch the ground, use your pillows and blankets under the thigh to give it some support. Placing the right hand on the top thigh to help deepen the twist. Sink the left shoulder into the ground, turn the head to the left, and simply breathe. Relaxing the face the mouth, the throat, and shoulders. Surrender the weight of body to gravity. Ringing out any lingering tension or tightness we might feel. On our next inhale, roll the head and the knees back up to center. We might feel like we need to do a little adjustment in our low back, our clothing, whatever it is, do so. 
Then pull the knees in and together, feet parallel. Exhale, knees to the left. Add a prop as needed. Left hand rests on that top thigh to help deepen the twist. Right shoulder sinks into the ground, the head turns to the right. Even closing the eyes to help the face, neck, and shoulders relax. Imagine taking that washcloth and wringing everything out. And then the next inhale, roll the head and the knees back up to center. Realign head with the spine. Take those hands back behind those thighs and one more time, let's stretch our legs up to the ceiling. Point and flex the feet. So this is a great pose to do in the evenings to kind of redirect our blood flow and energy towards our vital organs, our heart and our head. A wonderful pose that aids in our sleep, And then bending the knees, try to reach up for the inner feet or toes. For some people, it's easier to grab from the outside, but we're gonna want our knees to be pretty wide here. The soles of the feet to face the ceiling for happy baby pose. So another pose that helps release the area around our hips and low back. and add a little rock side to side. Try to bring the soles of the feet to touch. So we did this pose earlier in a seated position, Bhattapanasana, now we're on our back. So as the soles of the feet come towards each other, move the hands towards those feet or ankles, flare the knees out nice and wide. Encourage the thigh bones open with a slight help of the elbows. Heels can drop towards the pubic bone. Take a breath here. And then hands to the outside of the knees, squeeze the knees together. Try to wrap those arms across the shin bones, head floats up, nose to knees to stretch out the root of the neck. Giving our bodies and ourselves an embrace this evening, filling ourselves up with gratitude and thanking ourselves and our body for our practice this evening. Big breath in. And on the exhale, we get to let go and relax. Finishing right where we started tonight, out and down on the ground. If you have those props around and you'd like to add them back into this pose to relax, please take the time to do so. Placing a pillow under the knees, support the back of the head. Even placing props on top of the body can help the body relax. Adjust the shoulder blades, allow the arm bones to roll out beside the body. Turning the palms up to the ceiling, allow the fingertips to naturally curl up. Find the very back center of the head, rocking the head a couple times. Poof those cheeks with air, stick out the tongue, yawn. Releasing all those muscles around the back and lower jaw. So I will guide us through a little bit more relaxation. We'll take a moment for some peace and quiet. I'll use the singing bowl to bring us up out of Shavasana and then to finish our practice. Closing the eyes, let the eyes sink into the sockets. Smooth the skin across the forehead, the brow. 
with the lips softly touching, release the tongue and lower jaw to gravity. Relax the throat. Soften the heart and the chest. Relax the back of the heart. Feel the weight of the arms relaxing from the shoulders to the elbows, elbows to wrists. Relax the hands completely, the centers of the palms and the fingertips. Relax all the way down the back, vertebra by vertebra. Allow the low back to sink into the ground. Relax around the waist into the belly. Relax the belly completely. All of the abdominal muscles and internal organs. Notice a subtle rise and fall of the belly with the breath. Relax around the pelvis, the hips and hip sockets. Soften the larger muscles of the buttocks, the hips and thighs. Let the legs be heavy as we relax from the hips to the knees, knees to the ankles, into the feet. Soften the soles of the feet the toes, the space between the toes. Relax the whole body. Soften and relax the inside of the body. The breathing is easy quiet and calm. Notice that natural gentle breath around the tip of the nose and the nostrils. If our mind wanders with love and compassion, bring the mind back to the peaceful breath. giving ourselves permission to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to simply be and breathe.
slowly coming back to the natural breath in the body. And breathing life back into the body, starting with the toes, give them a gentle wiggle. Make the fingertips up. Rock the head side to side, rolling out the wrists and the ankles. Next inhale, re-extend the arms overhead into our long body stretch. Stretch out the legs, point and flex the feet. We can give our right side a little bit longer of a stretch. Give the left side a little bit more. And then on the inhale, come back to center, spread the fingers, spread the toes, creating a lot of space in our body this evening. On the exhale, floating those arms down, stepping the feet in. And then hugging those knees in to rock side to side. Right arm comes beside the head. We roll all the way onto that side into Supta Balasana, sleeping baby, cradling the head on the arm, allowing the top hand to fall to the floor in front of the heart. This is a nice time to create a positive intention affirmation or mantra to take with us into our evening. And then trying to keep those eyes soft and closed, press into the ground, use those hands to walk the body back up. We will revisit any comfortable seated position on our mat and take just a couple more breaths together this evening. Finding the sit bones, sitting up tall through the crown of the head. Minding our surroundings, floating those arms back out beside the body, turning the palms up. Inhale, breathing, let's float those arms all the way up to the ceiling and gathering up everything we need for the rest of our evening. Turning the palms out, big breath out, floating the fingertips all the way back down to the ground and letting go of all that other junk we don't need this evening. One more time, inhale, arms up. This time, bring the palms to touch, exhale, hands to heart. Humbly bow the head down to our heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful to anyone else that made it possible for us to practice our yoga together today. If you'd like to join me in the Om Shanti Mantra, please do so. It means peace, peace, peace. Taking a deep breath in to begin. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And I thank you all so much for being here, for sharing in this experience, for allowing me to be a part of it. Again, a huge thank you to Muslim Space and Shabana and all the others that put their effort into making this happen and collaborating with Austin Yoga Tree. So um, thank you. I hope that it's been beneficial for you all. And Thank you so much, Joanne. That was beautiful. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for making the effort to join us this evening in your peaceful garden and, <laughs> and being with us tonight. So um, have a wonderful week and celebration on Thursday with your friends and family and community. And thanks again for letting me be a part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And so also to Austin Yoga Tree and, you know, this is such a beautiful series. I love having this um, during Ramadan and I hope others appreciate it as well. And I know for me today was super relaxing. Just, I could have fallen asleep at, on that mat right there at the end. Of <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so glad when I heard from you again. So um, it's been quite the experience going through everything we've all gone through the last year or so. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys so much. come back together. Yeah, we appreciate you so much and thank you so much for, you know,
providing us this beautiful practice and helping us rejuvenate during Ramadan. And, you know, again, as, as we've talked about over this last couple of weeks, it's such a beautiful opportunity also to connect mind, body, spirit, and also to connect with um, the divine. So in a, in, in a, we've been talking throughout this Ramadan about different ways you can connect to the divine. You might not think of you know, if you're not from the Vedic tradition, you might not think of yoga as an opportunity to do that, but it really it is. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's a very powerful place to be when we can allow ourselves to, to have that in our lives and to come back to it and to be reminded of everything that, you know, we have. So well, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Enjoy your evening, ladies. Take care and be in touch. Bye-bye. Look forward to next year. <laughs>